Hey what's up creators and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 5 survival course. In today's video we're going to be showing you how we can set up the foundation for our fur system or our water system. That being said as we go through the game the player is going to need to drink some water. So just like we have with the hunger bar we're going to be having a water bar which is going to be slowly going down over time. Now programmatically for this first bit it's going to be working exactly the same as it did for the hunger system. The system for collecting water that we're going to do in the next video is going to be a little bit more complicated and a lot of fun. For now though let's go ahead and show you how we can get that first up and running. So inside of Unreal Engine, the very first thing that we're going to need to do then is open up our BP underscore first person character. Just like before, we're going to need to have two variables. We're going to need to have one variable for the first and one for the maximum first. So let's set that up. So go to variables, let's set up a new variable and we're going to give this the name water level. And then I'm going to go ahead and set this to the type float. I'm going to press compile and set the default level to 100. Then I'm also going to add in another float and I'm going to give this the name max water level. And then again compile and set this to 100. Now then, two things that I'm going to need to do from here. First of all, I'm going to need to make the function which actually drains the water level. Then I'm also going to need to create a function which updates the water level. So this process from here is going to seem very, very familiar. What I'm going to be doing is just creating those two functions that I said in the exact same way that I did for my hunger system. Let's set that up. So inside of here then, what we're going to do is let's start off with the drain water. To do this, we're going to add a new function by going to the plus icon there. We're going to call it drain water. Then in terms of our code, what we're going to do is get a reference to our water level, we're going to drag out from that and we're going to decrement that float. Then from here what we're going to do is simply go into here and add in the return node. Now we will, once we create the function for updating that on the heads up display, we will be adding that in. But for now we just want to make sure that we can get this running and we can get that value going down. So what I want you to do is go ahead and hit compile. Now what we're going to do is just create that function which is actually going to update the water. And then we can actually test this and put it on the screen. To do this we are going to go over to our functions again and we're going to create a new function called update water. And we're going to be doing this in the exact same route. And because we've actually did the last tutorial where we already have the heads up display reference and we understand how this works, it's going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to get a reference to my HUD. So get a reference to your HUD ref. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the first bar. And then what we're going to do with this is simply set the first bar. So set percentage. And with this, with the in percentage, like we did before, we're just going to take the water level, get a reference to it, get a reference to our max water level, and just divide water level by the maximum value and put this in just like that. Once we've done that, what we can do is simply use that return node to say, hey, we're finished here. Once we've done this, what we can do is go back to our drain water and tell it to update the water level every time it does this. Once we've done this, what we're also going to need to do is within our heads up display, which we can find in our survival course, go to blueprints. So under, if we go to our survival course, user interface and player HUD, just make sure that by default, our water is also set the percentage to one. So it's completely full. Once we've done this, we now have our two functions. One that's going to drain the water, which we can set on a timer, and another function which we can call every time we drain that water, which is actually going to update the heads up display, the user interface for the player. 
That being said, let's go ahead and implement this now, get that drain water running on a timer, and then we're going to see all of this come together on our heads up display. So to do this, we're going to be doing it in exactly the same way as we did for the other stuff. So we're going to go back to our first person character here. We're going to go in here and after we set a timer by function name for drain hunger, we're going to do the same thing, set timer by function name. And this time the function name is going to be drain water. The time for this, I'm going to have exactly the same as our hunger system. And I'm also going to tell this to loop. If I go ahead and compile this now, minimize and play, you should be able to see that both of these bars are going down at the exact same time. If I use the tilde key and type in slow mode 10, I can see this all moving faster, everything just gets quicker, but they're moving down at the exact same time. Perfect. So with this being done, we can now see we have our hunger system and we have our water system. What you can do if you want to within your third person character is you could maybe make the water rate be a little bit slower. So I could set this to five. So he gets hungry before he gets uh, before he gets um, thirsty. We can set all of that up. Okay, the next thing that I want us to do is just make sure that our heads up display, our user interface has the correct value for our water and our hunger as soon as we start playing. So if we ever change those minimum and maximum values in our character blueprint, and we don't change the widget blueprint, we're good to go. Really straightforward, all we're gonna be doing is just calling those two functions for update water, update hunger, as soon as we start to play. Let's do that. So that being said, what we're gonna do is inside of here, just before we set these timers, we're actually going to call update water, and we're going to join this up just like that. And then we're also going to call update hunger by just getting a reference to that there and bringing it in. And now when we begin play, we've actually got quite a few things going on. We're creating the user interface and adding it to the viewport. We're updating the water and the hunger. And then we're just starting off our hunger and our first system. If we go ahead and press play and take a look at this, everything is good to go. That being said, we now have the foundation for our water and our hunger system, good to go, working bug free, and we can start to build the pickup in the next video for our water where we can actually go up to like a little pond or a river or something like that, look at it, press E to drink, and it's going to fill that first system or that water system back up for the player. I hope you have enjoyed it. Be sure to check out the next video in this course to continue on. But for now, as always, stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out.